so what what essentially happens is that i was uh, very very intrigued about the process of construction you know like um, um, you know this is um, this is my 18th year of practicing sustainable architecture so from the very start one big factor was that uh, very often architecture is simply defined by the end product we often fail to recognize there is a process on site and me being not a boutique architect someone who is very much uh, out in the uh, you know like uh, in the site conversing with the juniors conversing with masons conversing with workers teaching them techniques uh, very often we found out that even though we are sustainable and and, and quite um, good in terms of in energy and carbon emissions we found out that existing ecosystems like even uh, small plants we we are very careful not to cut down big trees but still the small plants and uh, small stuff and all we we generally tend to destroy when we are building and for us this was a a, a big no no uh, and but it took time for us to be sensitive like for example even if a worker by mistake dumps a a a a, a, a barrel of cement nearby the dust of the cement is enough to kill few shrubs now the best part of churi is churi is a project that you cannot see 10 meters away from it it's hidden it's in a it's in a um, a rocky slope and you literally cannot see the project 10 meters away from it so it is a fantastic phenomenal example of camouflage architecture now you may ask what camouflage architecture is camouflage architecture is about not uh, uh, being seen yeah. and um, churi project actually started with three tamarind trees you can in this picture actually it is one of the bigger tamarind trees in the site and tamarind tree is generally known as a very sturdy tree which would never collapse never die so we started to build uh, mud squirrels like virpool uh, you know which started projecting slowly like a in a corbelling form and eventually become what what you are seeing in here and while we were doing this mud composite beams we needed to utilize a bit more of uh, uh, holes in the beams to make it lighter as well as sturdy so we started using plastic bodies and uh, that is how you know churi came so the best factor of churi is we never killed any plants uh in the in the site existing site we never planted also any plants this is all the way it was uh, uh before and after okay. uh did you say you didn't have any um uh our bu- building plants when you this are uh, constructed um or did you- Uh, I I had a building plan, but yeah. it all it all went to went to shit the second I I started doing yeah. it there because it was it was very difficult for my junior architects to actually get a hang of the site also because the uh, the the variations were too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so at some point of time, I think we checked the plans. Uh, uh, we knew that it had to be a general direction which we are taking. Uh, and uh, be you know like very wary of how it can go forward so yes we had a plan to start off but it never worked properly to be honest so oh, um, i'm i'm curious by the way you approach this uh so this is more of a like a practice side so how did you get it to be approved by the building council because i can only assume since you use uh, recycled plastic bottles uh would was not a complicated process this is a rural outskirt of india uh you can build using uh, no objection certificates you know noc is from the local panchayat and uh, you, many of the houses uh, will get noc certificates and uh, we submitted a basic plan which was similar to this the criteria here is that the area shouldn't be more than a particular uh, you know um, 
number. So when you submit a plan, it is okay to have variations and later you can do a completion certificate. And uh, most of the people are not aware of now uh, the earth techniques. So they just assume that, okay, this might be some cement and uh, plastered with mud because now it is a fancy thing to do some mud plastering. So many people don't even know that this is original. You know, at this day and time of greenwashing, uh, you know, everybody has some earthy interiors. There are, you know, sometimes I go to uh, buy tiles and find the ceramic tiles which look like this. Uh, I find now 3D tiles, uh, you know, so instead of using a bit of clay and mud, people actually go so far as to do 3D printing of uh, tiles to make it look like this kind of thing. So it's very easy to for a, for even an official to think, okay, this must be a normal construction which they have, you know, like uh, uh, added an uh, addition layer of mud plastering to to make it like this because that is how we are, aren't we? You know, today uh, we are a generation of architects and builders who do not have any idea of load bearing construction any idea of traditional techniques and its versatility and its strength. We are very happy to forego all the techniques that were taught to us generations ago and just safely sleep under the comfort of concrete pillars and concrete jungles. And if needed, have a superfluous, superficial plastering on top, isn't it? Uh, that's all right. So this is this is a fantastic part of Chile. This particular picture I am very proud of. Uh, where uh, that that is that is exactly how it was when we found it. And can you imagine there is an entire building inside it? You know that is is the beauty of it. That is my front elevation. If you understand what I am saying. You can see a small shard of glass in the uh, in the in the reflecting back. Other than that, you are not able to see anything. That is the magnificence of this project. And so, uh, what about the 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 rest of the body of the structure? Was uh, so I guess you also had to use like a reinforced concrete base for this, and then on top you used a uh, recycled plastic. Uh, no, reinforced concrete base, oh, no, we, we always use plastic as part of the reinforced concrete base. Mm -hmm. So this is all poured earth foundation, uh, poured earth uh, foundation with uh, uh, poured earth uh, churis, uh, with some portions having this uh, particular reinforced concrete beam, which is infilled with plastic bottles. So it saves around 30% of concrete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess it makes the concrete more lighter. It makes the concrete more lighter and the, uh, and the concrete substantially less. So, yeah. But, you know, but not, but not following the plan, uh, how did you manage to make this many layer work in the process? This house, yeah. this house has a lot of layer, like, it's not an easy management. Yeah. So uh, this is a fantastic example of how architects can manage if they are attuned to the site. Today, we are nothing but glorified draftsmen. We do not know how to manage a site. In fact, we look like the local idiots whenever we go to the site, to the contractor, to the mason, architects are nothing but uh, some draftsman showing some plan. And very often than not, we are mocked, we are, we are bullied, and, uh, and, 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 very, and, and more often than not, the solutions, they have to find out the mistakes created by the architect or the draftsman. This simply exposes how vulnerable we are 
and how ignorant we are about our practices our ancestors never had any need for anyone called architect they built with their hands if you go few generations behind your parents built on their own they didn't need any architect at site we go few generations back to mine my parents or grandparents or parents before them would have built but today the same thing has happened to us architects architects do not know anything about building but to draw on paper and to talk big our education has has failed us big time. but here it's a different situation you have to understand here um, with the aid of modern technique like every mason would have a whatsapp um, and you know like like this kind of zoom conversation is possible with my supervisor at any point of time and my team is my students my masons even though older than me is my student i taught them the technique uh so in that sense we have control over what is happening so the so the belief system should start from the architect in action not in words yeah exactly i mean uh yeah there's a um, uh, a lot of uh, times these days maybe you're right i guess especially the younger generation that uh, they just leave it all to the contractor and as long as they create these plans uh, it's already okay but uh what i like about your approach it's it really puts emphasis on the management side and the execution side i mean i, I believe yeah i mean it's true that's what architecture should be should be made into a physical form and should be experienced but uh architecture is yes. not the final product it is okay. a process people often think that you know like uh, like like we sitting in the office is and and somewhere someone is making decisions for us uh it doesn't work that way you know if you want to create a substantial unique idea uh you also have to be involved in the process not just uh, sending out papers in that direction that is needed i'm not I'm not uh, uh, discouraging uh, drawings or anything. I'm just saying you need to be more out there along with the drawings. Yeah. And uh, perhaps uh, one more question for me on this: uh, Did you? Uh, how do you go about the process in selecting the materials to use in the construction? Like. Uh, before you do the design do you scout the area i believe i heard in one of your talks that you scour the area and, and search for the most uh, ideal material to use for the building yes we are a vagabond practice that means we do not have office we just uh, work out we have uh, around 12 Thirteen architects uh, who work in various places. We do not work from a single office. We work from various places, and which means we are in much more connection with the site. Site is our office, uh, and I, I, I have, I have pushed the importance of scouring the site and being a part of the site uh, in almost all my interviews. it is very important that an architect understands his site his or her site uh, it, it is a, I, i cannot stress the importance more more uh, it is it is paramount that every design originates with site as as literally the 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 inspiration only then you will be able to understand uh, every nuance of the site otherwise it's just a, a plain dimensioned two dimensional drawing that is in front of you and, and 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 you literally wouldn't have any idea of what that place means what that place can do you can you can 
uh, you can how to say rampage that particular site and put your wonderful pretty expression but it will never be a part of this site I I think it's really important that you mentioned that because as much as the time pass by we, people get more rely on like this AI and how you can just do everything in 3D modeling but even I was a person who really rely on 3D modeling but when you go to the site and you experience the location you get so many new ideas on how if your and you understand if your idea is really working right now or not because because it's going to be so much different that the interaction between your project and the ambiance and environment is is going to make it a good project or a bad project not just the architecture itself not just that project itself and uh, thank you for mentioning that i think it's really important especially for new generation to understand the importance of this thank you maybe and yeah. another question yeah, okay. you mentioned the type of architecture that is not shown from that side camouflage you understand what what camouflage yeah camouflage ah. camouflage uh, can, can you explain uh, more about that yeah yeah so uh when i was small we used to come for vacations to india and very often we would find uh, uh this tourist uh, destinations uh called ooty and kodaikanal because i am from south india and we would go there have a gala of time and but as i as i grew up these destinations uh, simply vanished out of the tourist destinations you know and i often pondered what really happened why is in people going to ooty or kodaikanal anymore the answer was that during that uh, i so these were wonderful beautiful uh, western ghat mountains you should uh, look it up you know the answer is that people literally invaded during that touristy time these mountains started building multiple multiple resorts it all became so crowded that people started abandoning it as a tourist destination anymore now this phenomenon is happening everywhere in the world we love a place at first we love the beautiful serene landscape or whatever nature has given to us and then we go and infest it invade it conquer it and after some period of time we do not want it uh, we kind of disavow it and we we never go to that place again all of you would remember some childhood destinations uh, that that were very famous but because of the uh, you know like uh, over over uh, uh, you know like over construction and the architecture especially now you can imagine that those places are no more visited nobody cares to visit these places anymore am i right yes sure. absolutely so so this made me think about uh, some of the places which uh, you know uh, i i also have a chance to build and and at that point i understood before the mountain is beautiful now once i finish building the mountain is no more beautiful for the onlooker mm. there should be a right for the person uh, the rights of onlooker uh, the onlooker doesn't own anything the onlooker is a is a is a, is a passer by now imagine uh, you come to the beautiful uh, kerala god's own country uh, you come for a trek with you and your family you trek the entire mountain thinking that there is a wonderful landscape but in the middle of it you see some concrete building it just ruins your entire experience whether it is concrete building uh, whether it is mud building when you see a box kind of construction which is completely against uh, that particular beauty of the nature uh, you feel offended but you have no right to question anyone all you can do is abandon that spot never to come back again so we were really focusing on the aspect of the rights of onlooker even the even 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 everyone has a right uh, and and though somebody owns that property 
you know we shouldn't go for an invasive kind of architecture an obvious kind of architecture so that is how the thought of camouflage architecture came to our 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 this thing mm-hmm.